I'd give anything for the fans. I mean, the fans, the fans make everything good, bad, or indifferent happen. Three, two, one. Do it, Peter. We want to entertain you guys second to none, which we did. Yeah, he did. Breaking tonight at 10, Cincinnati Reds legend Pete Rose has died. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. I'm Trisha Mackey. And I'm Rob Williams. Let's give you a live look at Great American Ballpark, where fans are paying tribute to the late hit king. Our Courtney King is there, and we'll have reaction live from those fans in just a few minutes. We're also going to check in with Chancellor Wynn and Brady Williams, who will be continuing our team coverage as a reaction to Pete Rose's passing continues to come in. But we begin with sports director Joe Daneman, who's taken a look back at his career. It's hard to think of someone more synonymous with Cincinnati than Pete. I agree. It is, guys, because he's from here and he represents everything that Cincinnati's about, right? With his hustle, the way he played blue collar, that's the way everybody will remember Pete Rose in the ultimate Cincinnati Red. But we understand it's a very complicated legacy he lives and leaves here in Cincinnati. He's a baseball hero who took a long time, right, to admit he gambled on baseball. But tonight I think it needs to be celebrated what he accomplished here is one of the hometown heroes of Cincinnati and one of the most beloved Reds of baseball's all time oldest franchise. It's an empty feeling at an empty ballpark, a city and the memory of one of its own. This black and white picture to remember Cincinnati's most famous red. The numbers will live forever. The batting titles, the World Series titles, and the title of baseball's hit king. Chow kicks and he fires, Rose Wayne. There it is, there it is, get out, get out. Come on. Hit number 41-92. But what can't be measured by numbers is what's captured in pictures. The picture of hustle that made this two-time Reds world champion the people's champion of his home city. The banishment for life of Pete Rose from baseball is the sad end of a sorry episode. Pete's life ended without induction in the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Banned from baseball, it took Rose years to admit he gambled on the game as the Reds' manager. Number 14, Pete Rose. But welcomed back by his hometown team. Did I ever think I'd make it? Nope. But I did. The Reds inducted Pete as a Red Jacket Hall of Famer and honored him as one of the franchise four at Cincinnati's All-Star Game. It's a black and white picture, but his is a complicated legacy, a baseball hero respected by generations and forever loved by his hometown. And what you saw in those last pieces of video when Pete was welcomed back at the end of his life, nearing the end of his life. And when he was welcomed back into the Reds Hall of Fame, I think what you saw was a guy that was always the life of the room. And Rob and Trisha, there's so many times I got the chance to speak with Pete Rose in those moments when he started to come back for the other players that were inducted in the Hall of Fame. He was always the storyteller, always the biggest in the room. And I think that's what Pete was to me. I didn't get to cover him when he was a player. Sure. I didn't cover him when he was a manager, but he was always available uh, for a great anecdote, for a great story, and it's a great thing the Reds brought him back and brought him back into the fold of the franchise. He's not in the Baseball Hall of Fame. I don't know if he'll ever get to the Baseball Hall of Fame, but he's revered the way he should be in Cincinnati for what he accomplished on the baseball field, and that is is one of the all-time greats. I think of all of the people I've interviewed over the years, he is the best storyteller oh, yeah. of all time. And he would have you rolling. And, and to even try to repeat his stories would be a disservice. <laughs> no, no. Because they were just colorful. What's your favorite story you ever told you? So the last time I spoke to Pete was right before the Reds went to the Field of Dreams game in Iowa. Okay. He was in town for a Pete Rose roast, which was always a trip to see that. But he was telling me about his trip he made to Field of Dreams, and he shared a story with me about Ricky Henderson, another all-time famous baseball sure. player. He said to Ricky, Ricky was inside the dugout and had these corn 
uh, corn stalks in his yeah. hand. Yeah. And he was wondering, where did you get the corn? And Pete said, look right out there. That's where all the ghosts come from in the Baseball Field of Dreams movie. And Ricky Henderson said, are, are they actually real? <laughs> that the guy's coming from there? So the way he told the story was so much fun. And that was what Pete was. He was a great storyteller who, sto who told the stories of all the baseball stories that have gone through years by. And whenever he came back to Cincinnati, as I said, he was always the biggest personality in the room. And that's who Pete wrote. It will be very interesting to see how this city honors him. But you know it's going to be in a very big way. Yeah. Because right. that's what we do. Yeah. And it's one of our hometown guys. And I think that's part of it. And I look at my, my father's generation. Sure. The generation above me that grew up with Pete, that watched Pete win the World Series, and then watched Pete break that record in 1985. That's what will really drive. You know, he told me that one of his weeks. proudest moments of his life was the standing ovation. Nine minutes. He said Nine no minutes. one, he goes, no one's ever gotten a standing ovation yeah. like that. And that one, when he was retelling that story, that one brought him to tears. I spoke to one of his former players tonight. He has a great story about Pete that I'll have throughout the show. We have stories throughout the yeah. show.